the roll, Madam Chair, then. I mean, Lord. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Each member is acknowledging that they are attending this meeting via Zoom and that they are located in Wayne County, Michigan, unless otherwise stated when I call your name. Commissioner Knizek? Yes. Commissioner Clark Holman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Chair Scott? Present. You have a quorum present. All right. Okay. B, approval of the October 21st, 2020 meeting minutes. Can so I have moved. a motion? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Basham. Is there support? Is there support for the motion, please? All right. It's been moved and supported. Uh, supported by uh, Commissioner Clark Coleman. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposes? Hearing none, motion carries. Next item. C, O business, there is none. Item D1, under new business, communication from Wayne County Treasurer, Eric Sabri, on measures taken to assure that senior citizens, as well as other Wayne County residents do not lose their homes as a result of delinquent property taxes. Okay. Uh, does anyone want to speak on this? Uh, uh, yes, uh, good morning. Can, uh, can everybody hear me? Uh, uh, yes, who is it? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, good morning, uh, 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 Chair and Commissioners. This is Roy Frage. I'm the Deputy Treasurer of the oh. Wayne County Treasurer's Office. Go ahead, Mr. Frazier. Yeah, so uh, uh, I, I did notice uh, uh, that uh, Wayne County Treasurer uh, Eric Sabri is on, uh, on with us, uh, Chief Deputy uh, Treasurer John Beer Adams and uh, uh, Ramesh Renati, our information management uh, person is on as well. I just wanna say good morning, good to see everybody again. Uh, and uh, uh, would, would, you, um, would you like me to run through the uh, uh, items? Does anybody, how, how, do, how shall we proceed? Do you have questions for me initially? Glenda Johnson. Yes, because this will be just a receive and file. Hello. Um, yes, we, we're waiting. <laughs> oh, no, well, okay, I'm, I'm waiting for someone wanted to, um, to speak on it. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yes. Um, uh, so, um, again, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for having me uh, this morning. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm here to answer, uh, 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 give a response to uh, budget ordinance, uh, um, page six, items one and two. Um, for I item one, uh, the county treasurer should take proactive measures to assure that senior citizens as well as other Wayne County residents do not lose their homes as a result of delinquent property taxes. Uh, the county treasurer may make individual payment arrangements within his discretion. The treasurer shall report to the committee on government operations no later than November 1st, which we did, on all measures taken and programs implemented. Uh, the report should also include the number of defaults on payment plans arranged by the treasurer. Um, the report needs to be submitted on the letterhead. Um, and so um, uh, the response uh, was given. Um, uh, as, as I go into the response, I do want to share something that um, this came up last year as well. Uh, there appears to be a slightly different request in the uh, uh, budget instructions from the Office of Fiscal Agency um, uh, regarding this item one. And it says a uh, report on uh, measures and steps taken to assure senior citizens do not lose their homes as a result of the accelerated collection process. Um, and just, just, you know, as I pointed out last year, as our office pointed out last year, um, uh, the accelerated collection uh, process is a right given to municipalities and cities. It's not something that uh, 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 relates to the, the Wayne County Treasurer's Office or, or Wayne County. Uh, but just to shed a little light on that, if, if that's like a second part uh, or a second uh, question within. Um, so uh, this uh, accelerated uh, collection process is uncommon and it's basically just used by municipalities to address abandoned uh, vacant 
you know, hazardous, dangerous property um, that cannot be used. Um, uh, seniors uh, don't inhabit these, they're, they're uninhabited properties. Uh, and so um, it doesn't really relate to seniors. Uh, but if our office is notified of uh, a senior being in, in such a, a, a property, uh, we, we will take uh, mes measures, uh, uh, you know, to uh, let the local know that that's the case and to make sure that that person is not on that uh, property. So, Thank you. Uh, so just, just to shed a little light on that. Um, so are, you know, uh, go ahead, please. Are there any questions on one? Anyone have any questions on one? Is one to be received and filed? Um, through the chair, yes, it is. It's a receive and file yes. item. Okay. So uh, we'll just take uh, number one separate then since it's, this is just receive and file. Um, so call the roll, please, on number one. Do we need a motion for this? We need a motion for receive and file? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's received? what I thought. Is this receive and file? Yes. I move. <clears throat> Port. It's been moved by uh, Commissioner Clark Coleman, supported by Commissioner Basham. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Knizic. Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman. Yes. Commissioner Basham. Yes. Commissioner Colleen. Commissioner Scott. Yes. Motion carries. Number two. Uh, item two. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, uh, the rest of item one is included in the response we gave. That was just the beginning. So I'll, I'll move on to item two as you request. Um, the county treasurer shall continue to take steps in achieving each of the below objectives. Um, and then uh, there are four objectives that are laid out. Uh, item A, uh, or part A, uh, to avoid displacing tenants of tax delinquent properties by assuring that they receive notice of sale and a preferred opportunity to purchase the tax title. Um, so in, in terms of displacing tenants, uh, we are uh, very cautious um, of, of uh, such things. Uh, we work uh, closely with community partners such as UCHC and Wayne Metro uh, to assist tenants who may be displaced due to foreclosure. Uh, we work uh, closely with the uh, uh, city of Detroit uh, as well. About I am I'm sorry. So we work closely with the city of Detroit as well with the uh, Make It Home program, uh, uh, again, which uh, helps turn tenants into occupants of the properties uh, if there's a quote unquote uh, uh, bad landlord. Um, we do send notices. Uh, oftentimes, uh, uh, the notices, uh, for example, with the, the personal visits, the, the tenant will often receive uh, that yellow bag and the notice in there, even sometimes prior to uh, the property owner uh, receiving a notice through the mail. So tenants are informed uh, uh, of uh, what's happening with the properties. And like I said, we go uh, out of our way to help prevent uh, the displacement of the tenants uh, in, in uh, tax delinquent properties. Uh, so that, that's the uh, response to A. Um, shall I move on to B? Uh, well, only if there's any questions on two. Any questions on two? Um, actually, okay. through the chair, this is uh, Joe. Roy's still addressing um, item number one. Item number two is, um, is, is a separate item. Oh, I thought he was on two. Okay. No, I, I shifted. Uh, I shifted to two because I, I thought uh, uh, num uh, one was uh, closed. Um, and so I, I simply was uh, addressing uh, two. Um, two has four parts. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, re receive and file item. Uh, does, uh, I'm not familiar with the language. Does that just mean that if there are any questions, otherwise it's filed and, and we're yeah, number one was received and filed. We voted on that already. Madam Chair, yes. I'm getting I'm getting confused. We're still on item one of one and two. Item two is a totally different object. I'm I'm thinking I messed up here and I'm trying to read and double read two. 
two has nothing to do with this item one that we're talking about. It's right. item, it's, We've it's, already voted on one. Now we're yeah. on two. Yes. Yeah. Of, of item one. <laughs> Thank you. My, my apologies. I, I, I misunderstood. I thought we shifted to item two. So we're on the second part of uh, item one right now. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, so the second part of uh, item uh, one, uh, uh, you know, the, the Wayne County Treasurer's Office takes many measures and implements uh, many effective and creative programs to assure senior citizens and others do not lose their homes to foreclosure. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, um, I'm sorry. So um, uh, with, with respect to uh, 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 Wayne County uh, uh, seniors and, and residents, uh, there are many programs um, uh, that we, we have that uh, help uh, prevent uh, foreclosure uh, for folks uh, uh, from the COVID-19 response uh, to... May um, I? I'm sorry. This is Chief Deputy Treasurer jean Pierre Adams. I'm sorry, I just want to jump in here. I think there's been some confusion. I thought we were still on item one. I mean, I'm sorry, we had moved off of item one and onto item two. Well, as the chair, that's what I thought, but it seems like there's another part to one that he's saying that I don't understand myself. No, I don't think we, we need to cover that, um, Roy. Right. I think we need right. to move to item two, which we have right. submitted for a receive and file item. And if there are questions, we are available to answer any questions. And if there's any clarification needed, we're available to provide that clarification on item. The second part of item one on your agenda. <laughs> okay, so we're on the agenda now. No, no, I said no. the agenda. I, no, the we're agenda. not. Hey, Madam Chair, I'm I have no yes. Yes. This is real. I beg if, your if pardon. I'm, if I may, Madam Chair, this is Felicia. I think the confusion Please. is that the report that was requested by the treasurer um, had several parts to it, and the gentleman right. was just going through each part. However, you have right. already accepted the entire report. Right. So I believe right. now you can move on to item number two on your agenda, which is a contract <laughs> with ALB. Right. That's what we should be on because I've already had uh, uh, received and filed. We've already... Uh, they had a motion and support on that. Right. So if the clerk can call item two, as you indicated, then you can move on to item two. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Madam clerk, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Item two, communication from Register of Deeds forwarding notification of an emergency procurement with ALB maintenance. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, I can understand why they... Uh, did this, uh, you know, back uh, when the pandemic started, but why is it an emergency procurement now in November of 2020? I mean, can I have somebody... someone to speak on that? Sure. It's Barbara Johnson. Chief... Can you hear me? Barbara Johnson, Chief Deputy Registrar. The... Yes, we can hear you. Okay. The reason this happened was, I think it was a problem with the way that our office and procurement were handling this because when we asked to have it extended, we just were extending the purchase order. So the whole thing didn't start out correctly from the beginning. And I think that's what the confusion was. So we just added to the original purchase order, which had been an emergency procurement. Um, because we still need the services. Um, it's really important that these high-touch areas and the customer service lobbies of our office as well as the treasurer's office get cleaned um, numerous times during the day. And um, we were just notifying the commission that we did have this emergency procurement. Madam Chair, this is Felicia. May I speak to that um, issue from Commissioner Basham? Felicia, I think we lost the chair, but I'll take over here. Oh, okay. So, so this is a general concern that staff has raised um, with regards to emergency procurements that may need to be clarified by this body, which is how long should an emergency procurement be issued? We have had several emergency procurements related to COVID. 
We've had numerous emergency procurements related to building issues such as chillers and other mad items related to that. And what happens is that um, these emergency procurements are being issued for long periods of time. So they may be issued in March and they'll go through September because there's usually an arbitrary end date of September 30th, which is the end of the fiscal year. However, that's not the time period for the emergency itself. We've also seen emergency procurements for over a year and in one instance, two years. So the question really becomes, is the commission authorizing the administration to bypass its approval process for six months or a year or two years? Or should these emergency procurements be issued for to address the immediate emergency? <coughs> and, if that, and if that emergency extends beyond, let's say, 30 or 60 days, then they do a normal contract that goes through the regular process. So that is the issue. It's not um, specific to this particular contract, but it's something we've seen across the board with these emergency procurements regarding the time frame in which they are being issued. Mr. Bash, does that? So, yes, I, I have, I'm sorry, my, my, my computer went off, but I'm back now. Okay, all right, go ahead. So how do we address that problem? In the, I mean, I think our commission council laid out the issue very succinctly. <laughs> so how can the commissioners fix this problem? Alicia? So I, I think that goes back to one um, reiterating to the administration that their authority under the procurement Your ordinance that you give them is, is limited oh. to just the immediate emergency. I don't personally think that an amendment to the ordinance ne is necessary. However, if they um, are not inclined to accept the fact that these procurements are limit are for a limited time period, then we could also amend the ordinance if necessary to clarify that. Can, can can I put that request in right now? Okay. Thank you. Martha, take it over. I'm done. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, so is it all right now to vote on this, uh, uh, Madam Attorney? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can I get a motion for this or is there Madam, any, Madam Chair, any other Colleen, questions? Wait, 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 wait. Colleen is on here. Yeah, for uh, discussion before we vote. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Thank I you, didn't Madam know you Chair. had joined, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you know, with the other meeting running late and I didn't know when this was gonna start anyway. Um, we had this discussion of Health and Human Services yesterday around another emergency procurement and uh, I have looked at the procurement ordinance. One of the um, one of the provisions about these emergency procurements is that uh, when the request comes or, or when it's asserted it's an emergency procurement, uh, the submission of that to the commission is supposed to include a letter that explains oh, wow. why so it's considered an emergency procurement. Uh, now it was referenced that there was an earlier emergency procurement that they added this to. What I would like to know is, do we have on file the letter that the ordinance calls for, which explains why this thing originally was an, an emergency procurement? Well, this is Barbara Johnson. At the time back in March when we first did this procurement, no, we did not send a letter at that time. We just recently sent a letter. Um, well, let, let, let me ask this my because it was because it was, I'm sorry, but yeah, it was not done correctly. We see that in hindsight when we were ready to amend this agreement that we were supposed to have sent in a letter at that time, back in March. Well, I want to uh, or, within, or within a reasonable period after it. I don't remember exactly yeah. how long we're given to send the letter, but we did have, you know, the furlough and all of that when we weren't even here for two months because we came back on. <laughs> so, um, so I need I need to hear from uh, my staff at the commission. Uh, do we have such a letter on file? First of all, and then I have follow up if we do. Alicia. Thank you. I'm back now. My my computer seems to be going in and out. <laughs> I, 
Okay. This is Felicia. So I am actually pulling up the contract now, but generally what happens is that we do get a communication um, addressed to the chairwoman that usually explains why the emergency is necessary. And there's also usually a communication from the department to the purchasing director um, requesting the emergency procurement and explaining why. And I'm actually checking, and I don't know if another staff member knows off the top of their head, but I'm checking that package now, but generally staff won't send it for mm -hmm. without such information, so I believe it should be in here. May I comment, Felicia? Yeah, go ahead, Barbara. There is a letter in the package, and in that uh, total agenda uh, package that was sent, it's page 16 out of 401. Okay. I'm going to check that right now. Uh, because then the follow-up uh, on that is, uh, does this additional procurement uh, conform to the original uh, letter that says we need to do an emergency procurement, or is this a different category uh, than the original letter from X number of months ago uh, talked about the emergency? It's the same. It's the continuation of the same services for the same reasons. Okay, well, I, again, I'm ch checking with uh, commission staff on that. So that was Felicia, just for the record, who said that. Oh, that was, okay. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's it's hard to figure out sometimes who's talking. So could, could council repeat that, please? So this, um, these are for the same cleaning services for the same reasons that originally were submitted um, due to COVID and the, ne and the need to have a continuous dis to continuously clean and disinfect okay. the areas that are being used. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, these letters, people have to have them um, when, they send, when they send in that we're gonna do emergency procurement. Um, so I guess given what council has to say, uh, Madam Chair, I'll be ready for a vote. I'll move this for approval. I'll support it. All right. It's been moved uh, and this supported. Is file. Receiving and filing. It, oh, this is received. Yeah. It's, it's, we, we just need to receive and file this one? Yes, but you still need a motion and support. Right. Um, uh, we need we have to redo it because they um they moved to approve it and not to receive and file it. Okay. Call the roll, please. Wait, 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 wait. We still um, need to read, gotta, uh, read the motion. Read, do that. Yes. So, Colleen, you need to make your, remake your motion. Uh, I move to approve item number two. Receive and file. I'm sorry. You. Receive and file item right. number two. And I, sorry, and I, I support and, that. Yep. Okay. Moved by Colleen, supported by Commissioner Clark Coleman. No, Basham, Basham. Oh, oh, you're not. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <throat> Oh, Lord. not hearing these people. Okay. Um, all right. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Knizek? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. <sighs> Commissioner Colleen? Yes. Chair Scott? Yes. All right. Motion is received and filed. All right. <laughs> Go. Oh. Next item. Item three, requesting commission approval of modification one to a personal services contract with one one-year option to renew with attorney Neil Lighthouser. Is there someone to speak on this? Yes, good afternoon, commissioners. This is Robin Diller Rusaw, the director of the Office of Public Defense Services. Um, uh, through the chair, if you would recall, this contract is one of two uh, of the attorney administrators that are needed for the MIDC uh, investigator and expert program that is currently uh, uh, in effect. Uh, Neil Lifehauser is one of those attorney administrators. And again, this is just the contract to renew the work that he is currently doing with the MIDC. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Hearing none, can I have a motion and support then, please? So move. Moved move by Commissioner Basham. Colleen supports. Supported by Commissioner Colleen. 
Thank you. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Knezik? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Yes. Chair Scott? Yes. Right. Motion carries. Item four, requesting commission approval of a two-year agreement with the Mike Cox Law Firm. Okay. Uh, this one here is j just for Mr. Cox, but it's uh, it's uh, two of the attorneys are working on this. So can I get a motion on this to support the commissioner for Mr. Cox on this? Move approval, Madam Chair, Colleen. Is there support? Support. It's been moved and supported. All in favor? Uh, call, call the roll, please. Commissioner Knezik? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Yes. Chair Scott? Yes. Motion carries. Yeah. Item five, requesting commission approval of retroactive of a retroactive one year cooperative copy machine maintenance agreement with Canon Solutions. <coughs> All right. Anyone want uh, any questions on five? I I don't Hearing have a question. <laughs> I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I don't have a question. Just a comment. Uh, go ahead. With everything going on, uh, I, I'm not a, a fan of retroactives, but this is for a dollar amount of $1,100. Uh, it, it's one month retroactive, and, and it's actually uh, for a copying machine. So in that, in that response, I, I would even make a motion to move it. Thank you. Support. All right. Moved by, moved by Commissioner Basham, supported by Commissioner Clark Coleman. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Knezik? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Yes. Chair Scott? Yes. Motion carries. Moving to the addenda, can everybody see it on their screen? Yes. yes. Item seven on the addenda, requesting commission approval of retroactive of a retroactive one-year contract with one two-year option to renew with Image One Corp. All right, uh, we have worked this one out. So is there any anyone uh, wishing to speak on this? All right, he hearing none, um, uh, any uh, commissioners, you have any questions on this? Then can I can I get a motion and support for Image One Corp? Hello. Colleen moves approval. Moved by Colleen. Is there support? Or supported by Basham. All in favor? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Knezik? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Yes. Commissioner Scott? I guess. Motion carries. Moving back to the agenda. Is that back on everybody's screen? Yes. yes. Item six, requesting commission approval of a settlement in a matter of Eddie Bland versus Wayne County. Okay, we need closed session on this, please. Motion to go into closed session. Support. It's been moved and supported to go into closed session. So can we just state for the record the reason for the closed session so we're in compliance, which is according to Corp Council to review litigation um, related to settlement and trial strategy that may be uh, related to specific pending litigation that may have a detrimental or financial effect if we have that discussion in open session that the clerk that can make sure that's in the record. Thank you. That's my motion. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, and that's my support. It's been moved and supported. We'll go into closed session now. 
We need a roll, roll, roll call. call. Roll, yeah. Commissioner roll call. Commissioner Kanizik? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Commissioner Scott? Yes. We are now <laughs> closed session now. Okay, give me just a moment so I can put those people inside the breakout. Thank you. Is Cheryl Jordan on the line? Cheryl Jordan? I think Cheryl left. Okay. Is there an attorney on this to speak on this? Yes, I'm here from Corporation. Okay. This is Sue Hamoud, sorry. So is everybody in closed session? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. okay. We have to tap on here to join the breakout yes. room. Yes, it should be a pop up and you click on that. Uh, join. Okay. Yes. Join.
Well, I'm out of the breakout room now. Okay, I see how it's done. Okay, we're waiting on uh, Commissioner Scott to join us back. I think she was having a little technical difficulty. Yeah, can you you can hear me, right? Yes. Well, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, on my on my screen, there's a button in the top left that says leave, which I usually do when I leave a meeting totally. But when I hit it, it came down and one of the choices was to leave the closed session. So it was a two-step process to get to it. Right. Okay, she's back. Uh, okay, yeah. are you out, Ray? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are we all back? <laughs> yes, we're all back. Okay, all right, thank you, dear. Commissioner. Okay. Bassett. So we need a motion. Is there any other discussions on this item? Move to approve the set. Is that what you're looking for? What are you looking yes. for? Yes. Uh huh. Settlement. Move Moved by Commissioner Clark Coleman. Move to approve the settlement. Support. Supported by Commissioner Basham for the settlement. All in favor, call the roll, please. Commissioner Knizek? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Scott? Yes. Motion carried. E, such other matters as may be properly submitted before the committee. I don't have any. Public comments? Are they unmuted? One second. Yes, everyone is unmuted now. Okay. Any Anyone wishing to speak on any item that was on the agenda today? Anyone's wishing to speak? Anyone wishing to speak? Hearing none, next item. Adjournment. What was your adjournment? <laughs> moved Port. back, moved and supported. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. Any opposes? None. We're out. Thank you.